Hey, welcome. Uh, this is Rob Ainsco here. I'm going to go over uh, my performance tuning methodology. Um, I don't really want to call this a guide or tweaks or anything along those lines um, because what I'm what I'm doing here is more of a a method on how to adjust uh, your add-ons, um, your prepared 3D to CFG and uh, various other aspects of the prepared 3D flight simulator to try and um, obtain the uh, desired frame rate uh, out out of uh, uh, making those changes to those add-ons and the uh, basic overall process of how you go about um, trying to determine you know if you have a FPS issue or not um, and this, uh, if you if you're tuning into this video, um, this is definitely not a video that's going to show you a magic setting that's going to make your uh, prepared 3D uh, version four uh, suddenly operate at you know 120 frames a second with no stutters. Um, <laughs> this is not that type of video. Uh, so if you if you're looking for that, um, you're not going to find it here. Um, but I am going to go over some of the prepared 3D uh, config settings and. Uh, my add-on settings and a, a few other uh, items along the way. So uh, if this is still of interest to you, uh, stay tuned and we'll go ahead and uh, start off with the prepared 3D um, CFG file. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so the uh, prepared 3D CFG file is uh, where a lot of your tweak settings, or I don't want to call them tweak settings, a lot of adjustments can be made to change how uh, aspects of performance um, but in making those adjustments the performance changes may be a positive or they may be a negative um, it's often a trade-off between you know better visuals less frame rate um, less visuals higher frame rate um, so it's always a case of you know trading one for the other and um, I'm going to go ahead and go through my prepared 3D CFG here and let's go through some of the uh, entries in that. Um, you probably, some of you probably already know that you can actually load the learning center here. I'll go ahead and bring that up. In the uh, learning center, oops. in the learning center, if you go ahead and go search and type in performance tuning, tuning and hit OK and click double click on the advanced configuration here and this is going to bring up a little section on performance uh, options you can set in your prepared 3D CFG um, they call them advanced tuning options uh, so I'll go ahead and go through some of those um, <coughs> and uh, how they uh, help or don't help um, I should I should add a caveat here. Um, I I actually don't use any of these performance options. Um, I found uh, for my particular CPU and GPU, they really don't make much of a difference. But uh, on the other side of the coin, um, for some people, these options may make a fairly significant difference. So I'm just going to go ahead and go over them. Um, and uh, I highly encourage you to experiment with them if you think that's something that will not help your particular system. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the prepared 3D CFG. Um, all right, well, we'll start off. The uh, first section is graphics, um, the graphics section. Uh, just for your information, this uh, um, semicolon here indicates a comment line so uh, it will get ignored by a prepared 3d executable when it loads it's, it'll just ignore what that line uh, says um, <clears throat> so with that uh, with that aside uh, I just I just do it really for um, readability uh, and ease and of use and quickly identifying different sections and areas in the file that I've typically changed in the past. Um, that's what the the dash line here indicates a section uh, uh, break 
and these asterisk lines usually indicate a particular uh, uh, variable that can be changed. <clears throat> so we'll start off with the graphic section. Um, these particular, this particular option here, advanced presentation mode equals to zero equal to one. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and set that back to zero. One. Um, zero is the default, um, and you may not see this in your prepared 3D CFG, which is fine, no problem. Um, it'll just assume a default value if it doesn't find a value in here. Uh, so advanced presentation mode, uh, let's go over here to the uh, uh, Learning Center. You can see this is a professional plus only option. Um, so if you're running academic, uh, this is not going to be available to you. Um, in my testing, I really haven't noticed much of a difference in this uh, particular uh, setting. Um, I've tried uh, uh, values of uh, 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 values of uh, of six um, and three. Uh, six might have been a slight improvement in in a fewer long frames. Um, I didn't actually notice any visual issues, but uh, I didn't test it extensively. Um, so, if you if you're looking to squeeze out a few more uh, frame uh, FPS, um, you, you might want to set this to six. But uh, I mean, honestly, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Um, like the information suggests here, um, it's primarily only intended to be used for training devices that rely on a 2D panel windows. Um, so if you have devices that are just simply 2D windows, uh, like a, um, a you know, PFD or something like that, uh, then or FMC, then uh, yeah, this might help a little bit with frame rates. They may not. Uh, like I said, I didn't notice any difference. Um, so uh, let's go to uh, where's the next one? Uh, the advanced texture update mode. Um, I believe the default is zero. Um, if you set this to one, like I suggest here, it'll, uh, it moves the texture update earlier in the frame. Um, it'll reduce uh, latency. Um, this mm, typically, uh, again, it's it's more of a performance tweak. Um, if you Im if you improve the panel uh, or gauge update uh, performance, um, th but you you may lower your overall FPS. So. Uh, um, I haven't really, you know, I've tried it either way, and, and again, I didn't notice much of a difference. Um, I think the default value is zero, though, so, and if you don't have this setting in your prepared 3D CFG, uh, it's not a big deal, don't worry about it. Um, and again, it's really only for the uh, Pro Plus version. <clears throat> Alright, so those two uh, more, um, I don't say esoteric settings, but uh, less commonly known or used uh, settings. Um, let's keep on scrolling down here and okay so now these settings I've gone over before <coughs> the opaque shadow texture size, uh, translucent uh, shadow texture size and the opaque shadow draw distance and the translucent shadow draw distance. Um, these are, are um, settings that will improve the shadow quality um, beyond ultra, <laughs> um, it also improves the shadow quality over distance, and um, these settings will have an adverse uh, effect on performance depending on how high you go. Um, you know, it can be fairly significant, uh, up to twenty, thirty percent, and it really depends on your GPU. But uh, if you have um, you know, frame to spare, frame rates to spare, and you're running VSync and you're locked at 30, um, uh, you might want to experiment with these, but if they drop you below your your lock rate, then uh, you might start to see stutters. <clears throat> so, uh, 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 increasing the sh opaque shadow texture size from 2048 to 
say 8192 um, notice it's commented out here I usually do that when I'm switching back and forth between settings I'll just comment one out and uncomment the other um, uh, so increasing this value here by uh, uh, by four or I should say a factor of four uh, will help the uh, texture map uh, shadow texture map size and same with the, um, the translucent shadow texture size Increasing those will increase the quality of the shadow maps. Um, and this is just talking about the distance, opaque shadow draw distance. You can increase the distance of how far away uh, that quality of shadow you want. Um, again, this is another frame rate hitter. Um, sorry, another frame rate reducer. So um, these settings are all about reducing frame rate. Um, you could actually uh, drop the values lower uh, 2048 here is the default um, you could actually go to 1024 or even 512 and maybe the shadows will still be acceptable for you or not um, you can experiment with that it might help increase your FPS while having at least some type of shadow being rendered um, so those are those uh, uh, let me see two two settings uh, sorry, one, two, three, four settings. <laughs> uh, the uh, there was a um, an actual bug in the translu translucent shadow draw distance. Uh, if you notice here, um, this is actually a zero and not a O. Um, I brought that to LM's attention. Uh, they did fix it, and that's why this is uh, now uh, the translucent shadow draw distance uh, with the regular O instead of zero. Um, so this is the one you want to use, the regular O, and not the zero. But it's my understanding, I think, if you do use the zero one, it may still work. But I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, all I know is that this one does work. <clears throat> all right, so that's the changes to the shadow quality. Um, again, that can either reduce your FPS or it might slightly increase your FPS. And it all depends on whether you're using... What kind of shadow options you have enabled all right so let's scroll down to the next one all right so we're down in the display section here and um, we're at the text mixture uh, texture max load um, now this <coughs> is also displayed in the uh, CHM uh, texture max load equals six and here it says uh, uh, use only multiples of three three six nine etc um, they suggest using this to adjust uh, for photorealistic scenery um, I call it uh, PR scenery um, I don't use a lot of photorealistic scenery um, I have I have adjusted this value a few times and again, I really haven't noticed much of a difference um, either way. Uh, there is a, a known issue with the photoreal scenery where it's capped at a certain uh, texture size. So there's not much we can do about that for now. However, um, expect that to probably change in the future. And uh, you should see... Uh, better photorealistic rendering but that's about all I can say about that for now and uh, oh <laughs> the equation that was given to me from LM I believe it was Bo, Bo Hollis had indicated this or it could may have been somebody else but um, the way the texture uh, max load equation is is it takes the max of whatever your current texture max load value is. Um, so if you have a value of say three, um, it'll take it'll put three here. Or if um, this calculation ends up being higher than your value of three here, it'll use that. So what is this calculation? This calculation would be three times your texture bandwidth multi, which is down here. And if you have that set to thirty. So it's going to be uh, texture bit man bandwidth multi 30 divided by the upper frame rate limit. If you're uh, using unlimited here, 
obviously it's going to be zero and this equation is not going to be calculated if you're running um, upper frame limit upper frame rate limit of zero which is, which essentially means unlimited so if you are using a frame rate limiter then this value becomes uh, uh, is used um, if you're not then this value really isn't used um, so let's assume that I'm not running upper frame limit of uh, zero here. Suppose, suppose I'm running uh, 30. Um, so we'll go ahead and do this calculation here. Suppose I've said this value is, watch, let's go with the default one of six. So I've got a value of six. So that's my value there, six. And then this one is the actual equation. Six times um, 30 divided by my upper frame limit of 30. Um, so assuming I had set that to 30. So this would be 30 divided by 30, which is one. 1 times max max texture load, which suppose I had the value of 6, 6 times 1, 6. And since the value is 6 here, um, in that particular case, um, the max texture load will then be 6, because it's comparing 6 against this equation, which equals 6 also. So um, the, the max is 6, so max texture load is going to be equal to 6. Now, if you change that, um, let's suppose... Um, <coughs> We uh, set the max texture load to, uh, say, 3. Uh, we're actually dropping it down. Um, so we'll make this 3. And max texture load 3 times. Uh, now let's suppose we increase our uh, texture bandwidth multi to 120. Now, these are just, I'm just tossing out some numbers here. I'm not suggesting these are the numbers, numbers you should be using. I'm just giving you an idea of how the calculation works. And okay, so let's suppose we have tax, uh, texture bandwidth multi 120. We set the texture man max load equal to 3. And we have our upper frame rate limit, say, equal to 30. Um, so we'll have uh, 120 uh, texture bandwidth multi divided by 30 upper frame rate limit. That's going to be equal to 4. We have our ma texture max load set to 3. So it's going to be 3 times 4 which is going to be 12. So we then do a max on the value of 3 and 12. And obviously, the higher of that is going to be 12. So max, uh, so texture max load is actually going to be set to 12. Uh, not set to 12, but it's, it's going to equate to 12 internally. And that's the value it's going to use, um, even though you set this to 3. Um, <clears throat> Now, if that's confusing, well, <laughs> it probably is. Um, but uh, what I'm, what I've noticed is that this value doesn't really make much of a difference for me. Um, and again, if this is only if you're going to be using uh, a frame rate limiter. If you're not using a frame rate limiter, these values are, as far as I can tell, not used at all. Um, so, and that includes the texture bandwidth multi. Um, at least that's from my, my testing. Uh, if you're set to unlimited, these values uh, are ignored. Um, I've tried 30, I've tried 120, I've tried 180. Um, they have no impact at all, as I could, I could see, when I have a uh, upper frame rate limit equal to zero. Okay, moving on. Um, this uh, other adjustment is... Uh, really more to do with uh, increasing or decreasing um, your autogen draw distance beyond what it's set in prepared 3D. Um, what we have here are, uh, is your autogen draw distance value. Um, if you set this higher, I think, I think you can go up to 72,000. Um, your autogen draw distance will be even further than it currently is, so um, it'll it'll draw out quite far. But be aware, um, there will be an FPS decrease if you increase this value above where you currently run your value at. Um, so uh, that's something to to uh, certainly uh, think about. I believe the value from the UI is around thirty. Thousand, if I'm not mistaken, um, 
that's the if you set your auto gen distance in via p3d's uh, user interface uh, and you set it to max i believe this ends up being 30,000 but don't don't quote me i think that's what it is um like but like i said you can go all the way up to 72,000 if you want to increase that distance even further um like i, said, I would never do this in any kind of um city or uh uh, area that's that's heavily populated it'll just bring your frame rates down considerably and you know probably melt your gpu your uh, your gpu and your uh, uh, cpu all right so that's that setting there um oh of course you're yeah, reducing this is like basically reducing it from the, the user interface uh, uh, but if you want to fine-tune this value um, you can uh, above and beyond what you can do in the user, user interface. All right, scrolling down, scrolling down. Okay, next value. Um, oh, the fiber frame. Um, this value actually isn't in there by default. I don't know why I put it in there. I was probably just prepping this. But uh, the default value is 0 0.33. Um, and again, this is another uh, value you can play around with to increase um your your fps but at the cost of possibly lowering the texture quality for the scenery the train so it, again it's a trade-off so the lower you make this value the higher your fps but then you may run into problems where uh, you get what they call the blurries uh, which is just basically the low texture um, terrain tiles uh, aren't being the higher te uh, textured terrain tiles aren't getting loaded in time um, so it's kind of like saying, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to wait a long time for you to complete this. So go on. <laughs> um, again, the value of 33 seems to be the best compromise. Um, I wouldn't change this. Um, I know a lot of people do, and they also make the change and then later on wonder why their photo reel or their scenery is so blurry. And it's because of this, probably because of this value here. Okay, so what else do we have? Um, scroll down to the uh, panel update mode. Um, again, this is a plus only uh, option. Um, and if we go into our uh, performance from the learning center, uh, where is this panel update mode? Um, default value is zero. Um, and this is basically controlling the um, I don't want to say the frequency but the the panel updates every so many frames um, and you can control this uh, to help a little bit with the uh, performance um, I have tried various modes here and I haven't really noticed any difference um, I was thinking PMGG's aircraft uh, would be a good test for this, but I, I tried all three, all four of these values, and um, I didn't really see any difference. Uh, this may be different for you, who knows? Um, but uh, uh, I haven't changed these. Uh, I believe. Uh, let me see. Actually, it looks like option value of three is the only one that's. Uh, uh, limited or only the only one that's restricted to the pro uh, professional plus version um anyway experiment with that if you want to um, see if your panels update better uh, that's a good thing to to try all right so let's move on to the next one oh the max vc texture resolution i think by default this is now 4096, but um, in case it isn't, you might want to uh, move this up um, above its default. I think it used to be 1024, um, but if you have any aircraft that are using high-resolution uh, textures in their VC, you probably want to set this to 4096. Um, from what I can tell, I haven't noticed any performance difference from this setting, so you know, may as well increase it. Okay, moving on to some other settings. Uh, scroll down and see what we have. Oh, 
here we go, the train. Ah, uh, yes, the old texture size EXP. Um, this, uh, if you're going to use texture size EXP, you must have your um, high resolution terrain textures, this one here, equal to 1. If you're going to use either one of these values, 9 or 10. Um, what does texture size EXP do? Um, it increases your land class texture resolution. Um, I believe for 9, it increases it from 256 to 512 by 512. For texture size EXP 10, it increases it uh, to 1024 by 1024. Um, and what that does for land class and land class only textures, not photo real, um, what that does is uh, uh, if you, in the things in the distance, like if you have mountains, they'll, they'll, look, they'll look a lot sharper. Um, the textures will look a lot more clear. Um, it'll be a bit more realistic. Uh, view distances will be a lot less blurry uh, mountains. Um, but again, this is only for land class, uh, land class textures. If you're using photoreal textures, this does not do anything for that. Um, this has been brought up to LM's attention. They are uh, looking into coming up with something. Um, and I'm pretty sure they will come up with something. So stay tuned. All right, moving on. Oh, I should say this is also the setting that will increase the usage of your GPU's VRAM. Um, if you're running at 9, you should be able to, you probably want at least around 9 gigs of VRAM, maybe a little bit more, 9 to 6. I mean, uh, not 9. If you're using texture size EXP equal to 9, you want about 4 to 6 gigs of VRAM. Um, 4 might be cutting it close, to be honest. Uh, so... Now, if you're using texture size EXP 10, you'll want more than 8 gigs of VRAM. Um, uh, so, yeah, you want a GPU that has probably, yeah, well, more than 8 gigs of VRAM. <laughs> um, in my testing, I've seen this frequently, you know, be around 10, uh, 9, 10 gigs. Um, I think the worst case I ever saw it was 11.6 gigs of VRAM being used. Uh, I have a Titan XP, so it stayed within its bounds, but uh, um, something to be aware of if, you, if you're going to use this value. Um, so, let's move on to the next one. Oh, um, let's just go back to the texture size EXP. This uh, it will have an Im a little impact on frame rate. Um, I haven't noticed a huge impact, but that again depends on the type of GPU you have. Um, if you have a fairly powerful GPU, you probably won't notice much of a difference between these two, but be aware it is going to you know, put more load on the GPU. All right, moving on to the next setting. Um, let's scroll down here. Oh, okay. I guess this is the last one that I've... I've used um, the job scheduler. This is the infamous affinity mask at a setting. Um, I don't use it. I leave the affinity mask to let prepared 3D just figure out what, what it wants to do. But bear in mind, I'm using a 7900X CPU, which is a, a 10, 10 core or 10, 10 core slash 20 thread CPU. Um, my recommendation is really to, if you have four cores, uh, if you have a four core CPU, um, then go ahead and experiment with this value and see what works and what doesn't work. Um, they have uh, online or affinity mass calculators that will do the calculation of the value for you. Um, go ahead and check those out and uh, see how they work for you or don't work for you. If you're running six cores of uh, hyper-threading, um, I wouldn't recommend using the affinity mask. Um, you can if you want. If you've got other things going on in the background that you've assigned to specific cores, then you know maybe you know it is good to have an affinity mask. Um, and if you're running a six-core CPU, I do recommend you keep hyper-threading on for prepared 3D. Um, if you're running an eight-core or higher uh, CPU, um, I recommend turning hyper-threading off. Um, one, it'll, that'll help for, with cooling. 
Um, it'll also allow you to run a higher frequency. Um, and if you're running eight plus cores or whatever CPU is called, more than eight cores, eight or more cores, um, you know, you want you want frequency because you want your primary synchronization thread to be as high a uh, frequency as you possibly can get it. So turning off hyperthreading is uh, more of a benefit, even if there's a slight detriment to overall um, uh, uh, caching and uh, memory access. Um, at least in terms of paired 3D anyway. Um, you want to turn hyperthreading off if you have eight or more cores. Okay. So those are um, those are all my I don't want to call them tweaks, but my adjustments, uh, not my adjustments, but those are all the possible adjustments you can make to your uh, prepared 3D uh, CFG. Um, there, there are additional adjustments you can make, of course. Um, but those are the most common ones. Um, and like I said, I don't really use too many of them. Um, I, you know, both, for the most part, uh, prepared 3D CFG as is. <laughs> will work well um, so if you do venture inside inside this file make sure you make a backup before you you change anything um, and uh, so that way you can easily undo whatever you've done so that's the prepared 3d cfg um as a course of action what i do is uh i usually uh, pick an area that i want to fly uh, do some quick testing uh, adjust my settings, my graphic settings, uh, adjust the add-on settings, uh, enable, disable add-ons, uh, whatever it is I need to get uh, frame rates to what I consider to be my magical uh, 30 frames per second. And um, why I call it magical is because my monitor, that's the 4K Samsung, um, it operates at uh, either 60 or 30 hertz, and um, I have it set to 30 hertz for flight simulation. It's uh, set at uh, 30 hertz and the reason for that is um, I operate with uh, V-Sync so I uh, have the V-Sync on which should lock to the monitor's uh, 30 hertz signal and then I set frame rates to unlimited. So uh, with that said um, let's go ahead and um, I have a lot of add-ons uh, installed uh, pretty much all the Orbix stuff um, but for this particular test I'm doing, which is at the, uh, uh, I don't want to say request, but there was a AVSIM user having some performance related issues, so I thought this uh, would be a good opportunity to go over a video, help users or anybody, uh, maybe to fine tune their system or uh, tweak it a bit to get uh, some good performance. So uh, what I'm going to start off with, um, I actually run a tool called uh, EVGA Precision OC and this is that tool um, I believe this is version 6.2.7 um, this tool is really just it's a really basic graphics card overclocking tool um, I don't always use it um, sometimes I do sometimes I don't depends what I'm doing if I'm doing some night flying then uh, uh, my GPU is usually going to be loaded up uh, and then uh, I also use it for monitoring temperatures. Here's the GPU temperature. Um, I do have a water cool setup, so um, my GPU temps are fairly low. I'm running through a, a dual loop uh, water cool setup. I mean, I have a, a water pump, um, a GPU full coverage block uh, for my Titan XP, and um, and then I have a, uh, uh, a EK. I think it's an EX480. 60 millimeter thick radiator with four fans so that loop will be responsible for cooling the GPU um, I also have a, a second loop which is uh, dedicated to the CPU and uh, that's a similar loop pump reservoir uh, 480 radiator four fans 60 millimeter thick radiator and it has a few other things in that such as uh, I, I monitor coolant temperature um, and uh, when I say coolant temperature the actual coolant in the tubes. Uh, I also monitor coolant flow. Uh, and uh, I don't know if anybody, uh, it's something that not people, not many people think of, but uh, coolant flow is important. Uh, it helps you get the best possible 
heat transfer you can get. Um, and it also um, helps you uh, uh, see if, you, you're, if you're running into a problem. Because um, sometimes um, uh, your system, your coolant uh, tubes or the water block or the radi radiator can get uh, clogged with particles and uh, other bits and pieces. So uh, uh, if you have a flow meter on there, you can you know, have a fairly good idea of uh, uh, the consistency in your flow. Um, so it's yeah, it's about one gallon per minute um, around there, and if that falls too low, um, or if it even goes too high, then that could be an indication of uh, a problem somewhere. Um, so it's just a good precaution, um, especially since I, I have my CPU overclocked to five gigahertz, um, and the CPU is a 7900X um, hyperthreading is disabled, and it's, so it's running uh, 10 real cores. Um, mild overclock, uh, I turn on OSD, and OSD stands for on-screen display. Um, if I click on the uh, hardware monitor here, it just gives me a little graph of what's going on with my, uh, with the items I'm monitoring. Uh, in this case, uh, this little OSD here means that's what I'm monitoring. And if, uh, you know, what the GPU clock uh, temperature, uh, FB, I believe is the front bus usage, and uh, memory usage, uh, frame rate and uh, memory clock of the GPU, GPU usage, uh, bus usage, and CPU package temperature, which I believe is your my um, average of all ten cores, I believe. Um, so uh, with that set up, um, what I do is I just uh, shrink this to the background, and let's go over. Um, uh, let me see, a uh, little lab map here is my uh, handy dandy tool I use for navigation, uh, the cheater navigation. Um, it's, uh, this is the connect piece, so it's actually talking to another computer that has the actual map tracking uh, software installed. Uh, I also have another computer which is actually recording the video from this computer. <laughs> Um, I don't use uh, NVIDIA Shadowplay, um, or it used to be called Shadowplay, I think it's called something different now. Um, that's the, uh, that's the, the, we have a hotkey you can set up to record your screen. Um, I don't do that uh, anymore. Um, I've offloaded some of the work. Basically, I have a, a two, I have a HDMI cable that runs into a splitter, and the splitter goes to my Samsung monitor. Uh, and the other side of the splitter goes to a um, capture card, a 4K capture card, which is in another PC. And then that PC does the actual recording of the video on my main flight uh, sim PC. And it helps save uh, a few you know, frames here and there so I don't load up my main flight sim PC as much. Um, anyway, uh, back to being on topic. <laughs> um, the uh, little nav map here is running in the background. That's great. Um, I also operate Chase Plane. And there's Chase Plane there. And um, for uh, my clouds, I'm actually using uh, my clouds and my sky textures. I'm actually using uh, ENV Dur and uh, ENV Shade by Toga. Um, for EV, uh, ENV text, um, these are the sky settings I'm using right now, I'm dynamic ocean. Um, sometimes I change between dynamic ocean and uh, dynamic continental, kind of depends what I like. Um, uh, for summer, well, I guess that's a fairly good one for summer. There's a seasonal summer one, gives a bit more of a hazy look to it. Uh, we can try that uh, this time around. Um, and then I have the uh, set uh, uh, two uh, cirrus clouds, um, set one photoreal for inland water, set five for waves, um, set two soft for the sun, and uh, set one cumulus for clouds, and set two photoreal for ocean water, and uh, set three for the airport uh, runaways, taxiways, and uh, I'm not uh, using any glare, any sun glare, um, random visibility uh, for the aurora, and set one photoreal for uh, tropical water, and I'm not using the grass option. 
Um, let's go ahead and do the settings here. <clears throat> okay, so uh, these are the actual quality settings um, for the Airport um, 1024DXT1. As you notice, these are all fairly low, and um, I highly recommend you start low and work your way up because um, I think you'll find that these low settings actually look pretty good. <laughs> um, and you, you might not want to overtax your system for very little visual benefit. Um, so uh, Airport is 1024, Aurora is 512, Cumulus is 512. These are all DXT, DXT1, and DXT5. Um, Cirrus is, uh, this is the only one where I turned up a little bit, which is 2048. A DXT5 and you can see it shows a little, a little performance impact here. I haven't noticed much. Um, ENV map um, and the grass I have off. Sky is on 32-bit. Special effects are on. Uh, rain is on. Snow is off. I actually prefer the snow um, that comes with prepared 3D so I turn that off. Uh, inland water, uh, 1024, ocean water, 1024, tropical water, 1024, waves, 1024, and these are all DXT5. Um, sun sizes, these are all defaults. And now we get down to the uh, EMV shade settings here. Um, I have high performance. Uh, there's a high performance and a high quality option. Um, I actually like the high performance, so I stick with it. My nighttime brightness is a value of 0.15. Uh, um, and that's it for ENV text and ENV shade. Um, I'm going to save this. Settings saved. Um, and I'm going to do an install here. Um, be aware that your sky check textures can and will influence the overall brightness of prepared 3D version 4. Um, so if you're finding it too dark, then you might want to try and change to a different sky texture that would lighten it up a bit. Okay, so it looks like the installation is complete. I'll just save again and go ahead and exit. Okay, so that's uh, uh, my ENV dir. I, uh, I have a lot of, I think I have all the FSDT stuff installed, so... Um, what I, what I frequently do is run their updater. Um, I much prefer to run their updates externally because they're more reliable and I won't run into any issues that way. So I have a shortcut here to my desktop for the FSDT updater. Um, the file location for that is in the, well in my case I have a separate directory called FSDT add-on manager. And you want to run this updater here, not updater 2. Um, this updater uh, will run updater 2, but you want to start this one first because then it'll run that one, the updater 2 second. Um, make sure you set it to run as admin. Here, run as admin. And let's go ahead and run this. <coughs> it'll go through and do its thing and make sure everything's updated. While this is running, um, I do have a uh, I do have the Pilots FS Global 2018 Ultimate Mesh. Um, uh, that's a fairly huge download, but uh, it, it is a nice mesh. Um, and it also comes with their AFM utility, and this is their AFM utility here. You can tell it what version prepared 3D, and if you want to make any airport exceptions, uh, you just put them here. And you go ahead and add them, and it'll create these exceptions for you. For you. Um, I have a few, but that's about it. I'm going to quit, because I don't want to do that. Um, okay, so that's the, the Pilots AFM. Um, don't forget, they've also sawed uh, this, I believe, we're at version 1.63 now. Yes. Um, you want to make sure this is set up, and everything is registered and active. Um, uh, and everything is here. So I'm going to leave that alone. And um, if you're running VA interface, uh, that's here. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I do have the VA interface. Uh, yeah, and, uh, another step that I, I frequently do is um, I'll go ahead and run this, which is uh, FSFS, FSFX packages. Um, 
uh, yeah, so I'll go ahead and I'll run any update. I'll run this frequently um, just to make sure everything's correct and working. Okay, that's the generic uh, precipitate, precipitate effect. Um, since in this particular test flight, I'm going to be doing the PMD 737. I'll go ahead and click this. Make sure everything is set up correctly here. Uh, lighter wing condensation, I have that enabled. Um, that's about the only thing. Uh, I don't touch the lighting because um, I, I like uh, the default one. And then hit apply and that'll download and make sure I've got everything set up correctly for uh, the 737 immersion, immersion package. And hit OK. And I'm going to say done here. All right, and another step. Um, I don't usually do this every time. It's just every, you know, so often if something's changed or I think something's changed or I've installed a new airport or new aircraft, then I might go through the my routine here of uh, making sure everything's up to date. All right, uh, one more thing I like to do before I start Prepared 3D is um, run the Orbitix FTX Central 3 tool. And uh, uh, in my case, I'm going to go with Lockheed Martin Prepared 3D version 4. And let's go to Settings. And uh, go to uh, Configure. This is config uh, configuring the Global Vector Tool. Um, I don't have a lot of uh, items selected in Vector. Um, I stick to highways, primary roads, and secondary roads. Um, I don't do bridges. Territory is off. Railway is off. I find it's just too many roads if I have to, and if I have those enabled. Um, water features both off. Um, various uh, features: beaches, uh, golf courses, parks, power lines. Uh, I have enabled. I don't like the wetlands, so I turn them off. Um, and then we have the airport elevation corrections tool. Um, this is a tool that's used to make sure the if you have any third-party airports, scenery, or whatever, uh, make sure that the elevation correction, I mean the elevations are set to, uh, or excluded um, so that they work well with Orbix. Um, so go ahead, uh, I run the auto configuration tool. Um, depending how many uh, add-ons you have installed, this could take a while. Um, and uh, uh, once it's done, um, then you want to go ahead and click apply um, if you do have any problems with the uh, vector tool here the AEC um, I, I ran into a problem the other day it was uh, one I haven't seen before um, what I recommend you do is uh, you know exit uh, the vector tool AEC exit Orbix uh, bring up prepared 3d um, load uh, your flight session, any flight session. Um, once you're in the flight, uh, bring up the uh, scenery library uh, dialog. And you don't need to do anything to it. Um, you can just scroll through it wherever you want. Um, uh, and then just hit the OK button. Um, this will then force uh, Prepared 3D to re-index the scenery. And um, once it's done re-indexing, uh, may, that may take a little take a while also. Uh, go ahead and uh, exit prepared 3D um, and then come back into uh, FDX Central and go ahead and uh, run the vector tool here and the a, uh, EC uh, tool and uh, hopefully it'll it'll work. Um, but that's uh, just in case you have any problems. Um, apparently sometimes the indexes may get corrupted or something like that. Um, anyway, be sure to hit apply after you run this. Hit OK. And hit exit. Now, uh, run this uh, every time you add scenery or airports or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and disable my uh, antivirus uh, here. Um, make sure you turn these all off. Well, you can leave them on if you want, but... Um, Ever since we had the meltdown and spectra viruses or malware or vulnerabilities, I should say, um, it's uh, 
having Windows 10 Defender active has become a bit of a a little bit of a slowdown. Not much, but it's uh, I just turn these off because when I'm flying, it's highly unlikely I'm going to be uh, ingesting any uh, uh, malware or vulnerabilities or viruses. So I just turn these off. Uh, I'm at uh, FSDT's uh, JFK airport. And I have a EVGA Precision OCX uh, running up in the corner, upper left corner over here. Um, there's the uh, on-screen display OSD information that I had it set up for. Um, as you can see, that's my CPU temp, um, 68, 63, 70. Uh, occasionally it might peak to 80, but it's not a big deal. It's uh, pretty good for uh, uh, 10 cores running at uh, close to 5 gigahertz or around 5 gigahertz. Um, frame rate is 3031, and um, which is about where I want it to be linked to my monitor which is set to 30 Hertz also so let's uh, take a quick look at my graphic settings um, I have no weather running right now um, I do have UT live running so there might be some AI aircraft here and there and, and I also have that I'm gonna turn that off okay uh, let's do a quick look at the uh, graphic settings here um, considering it's, uh, New York is a dense area and I'm running uh, um, FSDT's uh, JFK, I'm also, I believe I have Image Sims uh, LaGuardia active as well. Um, and uh, here are the settings. Um, I am running Dynamic Light, so I'm keeping the AA down to 4X MSAA. Um, I notice I am running 4K resolution here. And uh, the texture filtering is uh, NCO Tropic 16X, and textures are 496 by 496. Uh, V-Sync is on, triple buffering is on. You can turn this on and off. It kind of depends on it. It sometimes helps smooth out uh, stutters. Uh, if you have a higher frame rate, then you can use uh, triple buffering. Um, but if you're right on the border, in other words, you're like uh, hovering around 30, uh, 31, uh, even 32, uh, uh, assuming you had VSync off um, and you're running at 30 hertz monitor, then um, you may not want to use triple buffering. Um, you, you usually want a little bit more pad in, in your frame rate uh, above your VSync, so uh, usually three or four frames, maybe even five frames um, above your VSync. Uh, frame rate, which in my case is 30 FPS for 30 hertz. Um, okay, so that's my display settings. Let's go ahead and go to world. Um, for this area, I have a uh, level of detail at ultra, uh, tessellation ultra. Um, I haven't found any performance difference really from any value of tessellation from a low to ultra, so I just always leave it on ultra. Uh, mesh uh, resolution. Uh, five meters. Uh, uh, I think I am running Pilot's uh, FS Global um, 2018 Ultimate, and they recommend one. Um, Orbix recommend five. So I'm, I usually have it between one and five. Um, for, but for this area, I'll leave it at five. It's not too mountainous. It's New York. Um, use high resolution textures is set to on. Uh, check. Um, I am using the texture size exp prepared 3d.cfg setting. Um, yeah, as you know, the texture size or don't know texture size exp um, is the value is either eight, nine, or ten. Um, a value of nine uh, will basically make your distance objects more crisp and clear. Um, a value of ten will make your distance ob objects look very crisp and clear. Um, the downside is that uh, Texture EXP10 uses a lot of VRAM. Um, you probably want more than 8 gigs of VRAM. And um, it also increases your load times considerably. Um, it'll double or maybe even triple them. Um, so right now, uh, since I'm in a dense area, I'm going to stick with the Texture uh, size EXP9. Um, still looks pretty good that way. Uh, and the rest of the settings here, uh, scenery complex complexity dense, very high, dense, dense, dense. Um, dynamic vegetation is off. 
Um, I actually like the um, uh, the speed trees, which is what the dynamic auto vegetation is. Um, but unfortunately, they just don't have the same kind of density as the standard X trees. Um, so uh, I turn it off. Water detail for, uh, for the area I'm in. Uh, we've got this set to high. Um, there's no real uh, benefit telling it to ultra. Um, but uh, if I was if I was doing say some GA flying and then I was getting close to the water or I was going to land on water with a steep plane or something like that, then I would probably set the water detail up to ultra. Uh, reflections. Um, I like having building reflections at night, uh, terrain, um, and user vehicles. Uh, I'm a user vehicle, and even sim objects look, look kind of cool. Um, but all these will have a slight impact on performance. Um, so for now, I've basically just user vehicle being my aircraft uh, is the only thing that would reflect in water. Um, at night time, uh, you might want to put buildings on depending on what your frame rate is like, uh, but it, it does have a drain. Uh, yeah, scenery complexity, very dense, like I said, um, auto draw, draw, auto gen, draw distance, very high. Auto gen, vegetation density, very high. Auto gen, building density, very, uh, very dense. Um, for these settings, you can probably actually set the auto gen vegetation density to extreme. Um, it doesn't seem to have much of an impact on frame rate. Um, the auto uh, gen draw distance does. Um, and so does the building density. Um, the building density, uh, autogen building density, has more of an impact uh, in combination with the uh, uh, building lighting with the uh, the shadows. So if you have the building shadows set to cast and receive, and you have high density buildings here, you're going to uh, incur more of a penalty on a frame rate. Um, what else? Uh, special effects, you, uh, and like I say, in a dense area, you want to keep those to low. Um, uh, in, a, in a more less dense area or a, GP, a GA friendly area, increase the special effects to high. So, uh, lighting, um, I have dynamic lights on. Um, since we're at dusk here, I'm planning on to using dynamic lighting. Since we, again, we're at, uh, uh, dusk when going into night I'm not going to do any shadows here and um, that should help out a lot with the rendering shadow quality is uh, ultra and uh, shadow draw distance is ultra I haven't made any tweaks to improve shadow quality um, you can I have another video for that um, shows you what to do there uh, to get uh, uh, crisp clear shadows um, at the cost of frame rate so Increase the shadow quality, lower your FPS. Uh, it's a, a trade-off. Uh, weather, okay. We, uh, I got the cloud draw distance is 110. This is set to the same value I have in HiFi's AS4. Um, cloud coverage density maximum, uh, detail clouds, volumetric fog, uh, detail precipitation, and windshield effects are all enabled. And let's go up to uh, not realism uh, traffic. I have uh, no road vehicles uh, in a dense area. That's going to definitely put a load on your CPU. Um, I have ships and ferries. Uh, this is New York, so it'd be kind of nice to see a few uh, ships and ferries floating around. Um, air uh, air traffic. This is actually set through UT Live, um, and it's currently actually set to uh, I think fifteen percent airline and 25% general. Um, these values are essentially ignored by uh, UT Live. Um, so at least I've got them set up to be uh, controlled or governed by uh, the UT Live settings and not by these settings. So you can safely ignore these. Um, and uh, I think that's about it. So those are my settings. Okay, so we're, uh, we're back in. Um, as you can see, I maxed out the vegetation density, and it doesn't, so far, it hasn't had made much of a difference to the frame rate. Um, it's usually a fairly safe setting to max out. 
Uh, GPU usage is uh, pretty low right now, obviously, but I'm not really moving anywhere, so uh, 35%. Memory usage is just a little over 4 gigs. Uh, remember, I am using Texture Size EXP9. If I were using Texture Size EXP10, this would be over 8 gigs, possibly 9 gigs. Uh, so be aware that uh, you do need a, a video card with more than 8 gigs if you want to use Texture Size EXP10. Um, so uh, those are the numbers up there. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, I think I've got my chase plane working here. Yes, I do. All right. Uh, let's go to external view. Anyway, so here, there's New York, um, and you know this is not at max, but fairly high settings. Um, and there's the sky textures. You can see some aircraft in the background there. Okay, so still quite a bit of density, even though we're not at max. Um, you know, we you can probably turn this down another notch or two without uh, it looking too sparse. Uh, the tree vegetation helps it kind of fill out the gaps. So if you're looking to improve frame rate, um, I'd leave your tree vegetation high and reduce your building uh, density. Uh, that should still give you a, a full full look, um, just with fewer buildings uh, and better frame rate. Um, so anyway, so there's uh, New York, there's our sun. Um, let's go ahead and fire up a weather engine here. Uh, this is the Active Sky um, AS4. I know they said before I have ASCS running, but um, it's not actually introducing any of its textures. Okay, so here we are. We got a cloudy day now. Um, uh, surprisingly, my fruit. We got a rainy day. <laughs> uh, this is uh, should and probably will have an effect on frame rate. Um, external view here is going to you know seem about the same, but uh, once you get into VC. Um, this weather will probably have more of an impact on frame rates. So let's go ahead and uh, jump back down to our aircraft. Once it's stabilized, though, actually it still seems to be able to lock at 3031, which is kind of surprising given the conditions. Uh, but uh, anyway, let's go ahead. Uh, let's try and fly with these settings and see what we end up with and what things we can do to. Uh, I hope out with performance. Um, got my taxi light on. Okay, I'm not 100% sure where I'm going here, but uh, let's just try it and see. Um, I'm absolutely not flying by procedures at all. <laughs> so, for you uh, hunting for procedures and what I have and haven't set, uh, sorry, that's just not the objective here. Um, the objective here is to to see how we do with frame rate. If I can find my way to the runway I want. Uh, FPS is still looking pretty good. Um, I think do I want to cross over. I think I do. And uh, I think I maybe mentioned before, but let's go over it again. Uh, my add-ons are, uh, I think I want to go this way actually. Let's 
excuse my crazy driving here. <laughs> um, the uh, the add-ons are uh, I have are fairly extensive. Um, I've gone over a few of them, but um, right now it's it's Orbix uh, FTX Global. Uh, I do not have the OpenLC North America installed. I mean, active. It is installed, but not active. Um, I have Pilots uh, Mesh, their FS2018 uh, Global Ultimate Mesh. Um, I also have the FS FX packages. Um, uh, uh, rain, uh, product, which which will do some of the rain here and some of the effects on the aircraft. Um, and what else do I have? Uh, of course, the HiFi's AS4. I got the VN EN environment text from Toga Toga Projects and uh, environment shade from Toga Projects. All right, so now we can see our FPS is uh, taking a bit of a hit here, uh, down to 24 with these settings. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's good to note that uh, this is 24 uh, with fairly heavy cloud cover. Uh, if I were to change uh, to a different day, uh, right now I've got AS4 set to uh, the weather control is set to live weather, so this is what it's supposed to be like in New York Live. Um, if we go to switch to say historical data and let's go to uh, yesterday and see what happens there <coughs> and let's take a look at, at uh, how our frame rate may be impacted by the type of weather ah, there we go it actually wasn't impacted that much um, it went from 24 to 26 um, it's only about 2 FPS, and that's probably because of the, um, uh, what do I want to say, the uh, uh, type of clouds that I'm using that I have set in the uh, ENV text from Toga Projects. Uh, they're fairly, I don't want to say low quality because I actually like the quality of the clouds, but they're not, you know, 496 cloud textures, they're just, uh, 512. Um, so there's, uh, you can see there's not much of a, a huge difference in FPS. I went from, you know, 26, I mean 24 to 26, and this is facing New York. Um, I also have other AI aircraft, and I have dynamic lights on, which reminds me to go ahead and turn my runway lights off, and my taxi light off, and let's go ahead and put the landing lights on. And as you can see there, it dropped frame rate by one. Um, so it's you know, a little bit of a hit with the dynamic lighting and the landing lights. Uh, well, the frame rate's going back up again. <laughs> Let's do the external view here. So there's our PMG 737. Externally, it's uh, 30 frames a second. Uh, And uh, that's our New York with a few clouds. Now I'm gonna go ahead and return to the PC here. Uh, I personally like nasty weather, so let's go ahead and set AS4 to live weather, which should turn us back to uh, rain. There we go. Okay, so uh, let's go into the Hi-Fi AS4 settings um, on my uh, network machine. Uh, go over those settings quickly uh, so you can see what I have. And let's go into Options, General Options. Um, there's not a lot of settings in here until uh, you change. So let's go under to uh, Simulator Depiction Options. Um, I have the Depict Hurricanes enabled. 
and suppress local weather changing changes disabled under cloud options I have number of cloud layers is five uh, turbulence I believe is a maximum at a hundred uh, cloud icing that's maximum as well uh, prevent thunderstorms when CB reported I have that checked minimum cloud draw distance I believe I have that at 110 the maximum cloud draw distance is also at 110 these match my prepared 3d settings um, force BN key to 7 8 I disable that low cloud offset I like 500 um, I think that's still needed multi-layer thunderstorms is unchecked a cloud motion effect is checked I like that and the offset I use for the cloud motion effect is 120 seems to work well on to wind options okay and surface winds 200 turbulence effect scale is about 76 maximum wind shear is 50 force ATC wind lock is disabled uh, interlayer wind op is uh, en enhanced turbulence is uh, disabled also wake turbulence strength I have at 30 down draft rate is the maximum which I believe is 2000 realistic thunderstorms I have that unchecked I actually prefer that the way it looks A random light chop turbulence at 40 percent all right visibility options enable wing fade I have disabled fog layer I have enabled minimum surface visibility is zero maximum surface visibility is 110 maximum upper visibility is uh, let me see uh, 200 in cloud visibility reduction disabled low altitude vlog is uh, I think I had negative 27 and for a horizon distance vlog v, v fall fog is uh, zero and that's it for uh, the um, hi-fi settings um, if we go over to the ASC4 uh, settings or ASCA um, I have sky colors cirrus cloud textures and cloud structures all unchecked um, this is actually controlled through my other product my uh, ENV TX and ENV shade overcast model I have set to high performance and uh, that's it for AS4 okay we're back in the simulator so let's uh, go ahead and proceed with our frame rate testing um, you know, about 24, 25 FPS right now, which is not, you know, the best place to be um, from the VC. Uh, so we can try and improve that uh, uh, several ways. Uh, we can always you know, reduce the building density, etc., etc. So um, let's go ahead and uh, see what we can do about getting this up to 30 frames a second. Okay, so we've got scenery complexity fairly high. Um, let's just go ahead and uh, drop building, uh, sorry, the uh, AG distance down a notch and scenery complexity down a notch and the auto gen building down a notch. Let's just try that and uh, see how that goes. Uh, and hit the OK. <clears throat> Okay, so we're back in. Um, our frame rate did go up a little bit, and a couple more, back up to 26. Um, still not at my what I would consider to be my desirable frame rate, um, which would be uh, uh, 30. 
but uh, let's just go ahead and see how this goes. Um, like I said, this is pretty bad weather. Uh, and let's give it a shot. <clears throat> Um, this is uh, FSFX packages at work here. Um, that's where you're seeing the uh, spray coming from and the shake. Go ahead and get back in the aircraft. All right, so our uh, FPS has dropped considerably here, down to 21. Um, our GPU is working pretty hard, 86, and so is the CPU. So uh, there's definitely a lot of work happening here. Ah, there we go. All right, so that's the uh, Guardia off to the right there. Uh, which is dynamic light enabled so um, that will also have an impact on frame rate when you have two uh, two you know fairly large airports next to each other and in a city area so that might explain why our frame rate is not as good as we would hope Alright, so that was the best of landings, but um, I was definitely not uh, prepared for landing. <laughs> um, let's turn around here and let's make some adjustments to the graphic settings. And see what we can come up with. Now, like I said, this is a dynamic light enabled airport, so um, <coughs> this, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, so we're at 24, and we're still trying to get to our magical 30. So how do we do that? Let's see what we can do about uh, graphic settings. <coughs> All right, so we have these pretty high. Let's uh, go ahead and let's bump them down to normal, normal. Uh, high, uh, not medium, let's leave it at high. Let's try this and see where our graphics end up. All right, so I dropped those settings down considerably, and oddly, I am still at 20. I only gained a couple of FPS, um, which is not great. What uh, what does that tell us? Uh, okay, that tells us probably something else going on here. It could either be the airport. It could be who knows. So, what do we figure out? What it is? All right. Well, let's go into World Scenery Library. Um, unfortunately, our idea is uh, set up through the add-ons. The only way to test that would be to. Uh, 
disable it in the add-on, and then proceed. Uh, and then, sorry, uh, exit prepared 3D, you go back in. Uh, so we can do that. Uh, give it a go and see, you know, what's what's consuming our uh, frame rate. Uh, obviously, something is. Uh, what is it? <laughs> uh, so let's cancel here. Let's go to. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay, so uh, we can disable Lagardia. Um, in here, I think we should be able to. Uh, that's Atlanta. There we go. Fortunately, that doesn't happen immediately. And it means we're going to have to restart Prepare 3D, which is kind of a bummer. Exit. Yes. Okay, we're back. I uh, removed the Image Sim uh, Lagardia add-on, and we're uh, we're back in business. Uh, and as you can see, the frame rate is back up again. So, um, yeah, the moral of this story is uh, add-ons can can have a fairly significant impact on frame rate. Um, why this particular one uh, didn't seem to uh, seem to hold us back more than others, I don't really know. Um, it could be because of the how the dynamic lighting was done. Um, but uh, so now that we're we think we've identified where um, you know we're losing a lot of frame rate here in New York. We can now go ahead and go back to uh, options, <coughs> graphics, and we'll go ahead and start turning uh, some of the detail back up. All right, so everything will set to very high, very dense, and see what that does for us. All right, so we're back in and. Um, where our uh, frame rate is uh, about where we want it to be now, 30, 31. Um, that's for the few changes to the graphic settings. Uh, let me go ahead and make sure Hi-Fi weather engine is active here. Okay, so Hi-Fi is loaded. Yep, there we go, those are our cloud changes. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, Let's see how this setting works uh, as far as the uh, stutters go. Okay, so uh, we seem to be maintaining about 2930 uh, FPS. Um, fairly smooth, not perfect, but reasonably smooth. Um, so as you can see, uh, um, just removing one add-on and I was able to um, get a significantly better frame rate. I'm not trying to blame that add-on or anything like that. It's just that some add-ons have more of a frame rate hit than others. Um, in this particular case, the the Image Sim Lagardia um, was one such add-on. Okay, let's. Uh, Go ahead and move to a more cloudy day to see what kind of uh, impact that has. Let's switch back to live weather. 
from AS4 and my understanding is it should be raining and cloudy. <laughs> yep, there are the clouds. Doesn't appear to be any rain, but uh, we've got the cloudy skies. Frame rate is still fairly reasonable. Right around 30. Okay, and it looks like we maintain 30 FPS for most of that uh, uh, landing and approach. I don't want to use the word approach loosely here because uh, <laughs> isn't exactly uh, how you're supposed to be uh, landing or approaching this airport. But since this is for demonstration purposes of performance, uh, um, as you can see, we you know it took a few steps for me to get to what I consider to be my desired frame rate, which is around 30 FPS, to match my monitor frequency. And here we are at uh, FSDT's airport. Let's go options, graphics, and here we are. Um, 2x uh, MSAA. Um, you can probably bump this since our GPU was fairly low. It was around 39.40, I think it is. You can probably bump this up to 4x uh, MSAA and not see much of a difference um, with dynamic lights. Uh, again, this will be very GPU dependent. Uh, so if you have a strong GPU, that should work well even at 4K resolution. Uh, world, we were. Uh, at uh, level of uh, detail radius ultra, uh, tessellation ultra, mesh is five, that didn't really change, seven, water detail was still the same, high, high resolution textures, terrain textures, um, scenery complexity very dense, autogen draw distance is high, uh, auto uh, vegetation density is very dense, and autogen uh, building density is dense. So these settings seem to work pretty well for a dense area with an add-on airport. Um, and then lighting, uh, I dynamic lights enabled. And other shadows were all off. Um, for nighttime, there's really not much of a need to have any other shadows other than perhaps, you know, aircraft stuff. Um, and the weather is the same. We didn't change that. So uh, really the key changes were in the scenery objects here um, reflections making sure those are all off your lighting and and the other key change was uh, disabling um, uh, LaGuardia image sims LaGuardia airport now it might just be that the combination of uh, FSDT uh, JFKA and image sims LaGuardia airport in such close proximity um, along with a very dense area like New York and a bunch of the other add-ons I have, um, FS packages, Orbix, you know, Pilot's Mesh, etc., etc., um, and Hi-Fi, those, those all, you know, contribute to, to frame rate, lower frame rates. Um, but, you know, with just a little tweaking, um, no, I don't want to say tweaking, that's not really a good, accurate word, um, I haven't really, other than the texture size EXP equal to 9, I haven't touched anything in my prepared 3D config. So all the adjustments that have been done um, through the uh, UI 
with the prepared 3D graphic settings. That's what I mean by UI. Uh, UI stands for user interface. So um, really it's just modification of this and the uh, removal, oh, I don't want to say removal, but the disabling of um, one add-on. And that add-on was the uh, Image Sims KLGA LaGuardia. So the disabling of that one add-on along with the changes seemed to produce uh, some fairly good results. Okay, so let's move on to um, hardware uh, monitoring, or I should say CPU activity and CPU performance. Uh, and so we can take a look at how prepared 3D works across multiple CPUs and how much load it uh, puts out and um, things that you want to watch out for if you have an overclocked CPU um, it's, uh, like uh, throttling so let's go ahead I'm going to bring up a couple of tools here uh, one is the um, HW info The update right now. Um, this basically tells you, you know, what your CPU is set up as, and on the uh, you know, your memory uh, settings, your clock settings, and what type of processor you have, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I don't really want to look at that, so I'm going to close that. But what I do want to look at are the sensors here. So I'm going to open that up, and this will show you. Um, what well, kind of memory you're using, um, uh, not the kind, but how much memory you're using. It'll show you your voltages for the various cores. Um, it'll show you what your uh, cores are set to. Um, mine are currently uh, uh, core one, I mean core zero is five gigahertz, 4.8, 4.8, 5, 4.7, 4.8, 5, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8. Um, like I said, I'm hyper starting off, so 10 real cores and that's their frequency and that's the voltage for uh, each core and you can see there's the ratios um, and there's my temperatures um, what we're really what i'm primarily interested in is the core usage here and also if there's any uh, thermal throttling throttling happening um, if there is, this will go from a no to a yes, and it should show up here on any particular CPU. So you basically just want to make sure uh, that you're not throttling uh, because of a high overclock or too high a temperature. So we're going to leave this running in the background. Um, I'm also going to bring up Task Manager here. Go to Performance and go to this real quick. Um, this is each core. Again, I'm running hyperthreading off, so these are 10 real cores. And this is our activity on the desktop, so not much is happening right now. Um, and the reason I'm bringing this up, so we can take a look at, at how um, an aircraft or terrain will uh, increase uh, activity across multiple threads. Um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I have no affinity mask setting, so basically all cores are going to be used. Core 0 is going to be the main sync core. Um, so that's the one that should see the most activity. Um, I'm expecting this core to be close to banks, and the rest of them to be, I don't know, between 60 and 90%. So let's go ahead and leave that there for now. Alright, so let's uh, load up my flight sim. So we can take a look at these uh, cores operating. Okay, so uh, here we are. Uh, this is at uh, New York, and this is uh, JFK, FSDT's JFK, and we're in the PMDG 737. 
So I'm going to go ahead and uh, not minimize the screen, but resize our screen here so we can see the activity that's happening in the background here. Now I'm running a 4K setup here, so I realize that the text over here on this activity may be kind of small. Um, I'll try and figure out how to enlarge it, uh, and overlay it, and post edit <laughs> so you can see it. But um, let's go ahead and proceed for now. So here we can see my current um, uh, temperatures, uh, core zero being the, the hottest. And here's core zero doing the most work right now. Since we're uh, not really moving anywhere, um, these other cores aren't going to be doing a heck of a lot of work. Um, these only start to do work when autogen, uh, sorry, autogen and the train system start to kick in and need to draw and place objects and all that kind of good stuff. So when we start actually moving, uh, this is when you'll see activity and these other threads start to increase. Um, a lot of people say uh, Prepared 3D doesn't use multiple cores. Um, that's actually false. Uh, it does use multiple cores. Sure, when you're sitting at a gate doing nothing, then yeah, you, you're only going to see one core doing much activity. But when you're actually flying through the virtual world, all these cores should light up. Um, and over here, this is uh, my clock frequencies, um, how well they're running at, my average, my max. Um, as you can see, they're pretty much all the way I configured it in the BIOS, uh, or my BIOS. And um, core usage, uh, and then uh, we want to make sure we're not seeing any throttle throttling over here. We're not, so that's all good. Um, that's about it for that piece, so let's go ahead and um, I don't have a frame rate counter here uh, it doesn't really matter I'm not really trying to show that I show that later on this is more about showing the how much activity is actually happening on multi-core systems all right so go ahead and uh, taxi out So as you can see, there's a little bit of activity over here. Not a heck of a lot. Like I said, we're still kind of not actually flying yet. And once we get in the air, this activity should start to increase considerably. Uh, as you can see, my core one is doing most of the work right now. Uh, it's current temperature around 55, 52C. Frequency five, close enough to five. And if you take a look at uh, Task Manager, this is the average speed across all cores, as I understand it. 
So it's about 4.9, 4.8. Okay, so get ready for takeoff here. Alright, so we're ready for takeoff. Um, we're <laughs> our core one is definitely working working overtime. Go ahead and take off. Okay, so now we have uh, a lot more activity on the uh, other cores here. Um, as you can see, they're up and down, up and down, up and down uh, as they load terrain and auto gen. Slow it down a bit here. Now, my understanding is uh, this core here is actually used primarily for the panel and gauge updates. They are now in prepared 3D version 4, threaded out to their own thread, at least that's my understanding. Um, I could be wrong, but it's, uh, that's what I was told. Um, now, you can see these other threads here, they're working pretty hard also. Um, this one is, <laughs> is maxed out. And then my temperature has gone up a bit uh, on the core, but not much. Um, as you kind of cycle through here, you can see the temperature is changing all over the place. Um, frequency is pretty much well steady. And if you're looking at the uh, 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 core usage numbers here, uh, that is the average. And these are the peaks, maximum. So, you know, a lot of the CPU is being used. Uh, contrary to popular belief, uh, uh, Compared 3D does make use of uh, multiple cores. Uh, looks like we just change over to, to nighttime here. Um, now, if we were to add a weather engine, let's go ahead and add hi-fi here just to see what kind of impact that will have um, where's that? okay so we're loading up hi-fi that should uh, add a bit more load 
Um, even though Hi-Fi is actually running on a separate network machine right now, it's still going to increase the load of the main simulator. Uh, and as you see here, it's added some clouds, quite a few clouds. And I'm getting a little chop. But overall, uh, uh, yeah, core usage is still yeah, fairly consistently the same. Um, what we've added mostly in the clouds is really GPU processing. Um, and this will vary based on your AA, so uh, I don't think I have GPU parameters in here. Let me check. Uh, oh, we do. Okay, so... Here's my GPU loads, uh, my temperature is uh, 33C, and here's uh, some of the, the loads. Um, this is non-overclock, so this is uh, as is. Um, if I were to load uh, EVGA, then these values would probably be a little bit higher uh, for my overclock setting, but I'm not overclocking the GPU right now. Thus uh, load memory controller load and I'm obviously not running max um, auto gen because of the area and location I'm in, I'm in. Uh, if we go ahead and uh, rotate around quickly here, we'll probably see more uh, activity on the cores, especially if we rotate around to uh, so that we get New York in the shot, or I should say in the frame. Yep, and there we go. We see a bit more activity happening now. Okay, so now we've got a little bit more activity going on because we have New York over here. And um, so, and more AG to draw. And if we uh, go ahead and let's just say, let's go around. Let's fly above the clouds. When we fly above the clouds and move to a less populated area, assuming we don't get hit by lightning, <laughs> um, we should see the the uh, GPU activity on these other cores start to not die off, but reduce. Uh, still at 100% on the primary core. We scroll up here. Um, we're at 52, 54C. So, uh, core zeros are pretty good. Um, if you look at CPU package here, uh, I'm not exactly sure how it's calculated, but my understanding is it's a, an average of all the cores at any particular moment. I think, uh, although it doesn't seem to add up here. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, so that's that CPU package. I don't know how accurate or not accurate it is. Okay, so uh, as we start to get above the clouds here and moving away from highly populated area, uh, all right, our activity across other cores now is starting to die down a little bit. Uh, you can see uh, they're not all having large peaks. Uh, and this should continue the higher we get 
Uh, it'll, of course, there'll always be activity. Um, it's never going to go down to nothing. Um, but the higher we get, uh, the less uh, activity there will be across all cores. Uh, because it's just not working the engine as much. Um, there's less uh, autogen to load because you don't see it when you're higher up. There's less trees, there's less uh, detailed textures to load. Okay, notice as I, as I pan around, you start seeing a little bit of peaks in the activity here across the threads. Probably just loading the uh, terrain at this particular view. And if I pan around to the other side, it'll probably do the same thing on the other side. Um, so, anyway, so that's a quick uh, demonstration of uh, uh, threading and uh, core temperatures, uh, of clocking temp uh, frequencies, and uh, thermal, uh, and making sure we're not getting any thermal throttling. This is probably the most important uh, aspect to get away from this particular set of information is to make sure you haven't triggered any th uh, thermal throttling over here. Uh, my CPU, that's, as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty cool. Um, nowhere near any, any throttling temperatures. Uh, for my situation, I believe I set throttling to 105C um, via the uh, EFI uh, BIOS. Um, okay, so that concludes this threading aspect. Well, this concludes uh, a rather long uh, video. Um, for me, this is probably the longest video I've ever made. Almost two hours. Uh, hopefully, I didn't bore you to death. But uh, maybe uh, if you found some information in here that's useful, um, you can use it to your future flying adventures. Um, and uh, stay tuned for uh, additional videos in the future. Um, hopefully, there'll be more of a me enjoying myself <laughs> type of video uh, um, rather than a uh, long-winded uh, uh, reference type of video uh, so uh, keep on flying and I shall see you all later